What's up, old school stereo fans? We are back with another unboxing. Thanks to Chuck S for sending this over. We're getting ready to find out what it is. What do you think it is? Oh, yes. Soundstream SPL 10 subwoofer. Let's talk a little bit more about this and find out what it's all about. The SPL line of subwoofers from Soundstream hit the market around 1995. Here we're going to take a look at a car audio and electronics directory from April of 1995. And we'll see the listing here of subwoofers. SPL 10 list here for $179.99 in 1995. That's equivalent to about $375 in 2024. Not a cheap subwoofer by any means. They had really big beefy models like the SPL 160. I love to get our hands on one of those. But here you can see the other line, including mids and highs, all kind of goodies from Soundstream. Now the SPL subs were designed for small sealed enclosures, had a four layer dual four ohm voice coil, Kevlar reinforced fibrous pulp cone, high sensitivity as well as long excursion, add to the beefiness of this subwoofer. Now this one has a FS of 32 Hertz, sensitivity 92 dB, rated power 250 watts program, Optimum enclosure 0.5 to 0.75 sealed. Now we do have the Soundstream Heavyweight Boxing Manual and we'll leave a link to it below. It's actually posted on soundstreamregistry.com. You can see all the different specs here. Whole bunch of goodies here if you want to know. It does have a 42 ounce magnet. That's kind of small in my opinion, but hey, this was 1995. The SPL 10 model has a two inch voice coil. It also has dual voice coils as you just saw with the old style terminals which we don't like we are so spoiled by the push button terminals from today's subwoofers this is one thing that i don't like about the old ones but again you can see the vented pole piece here see this 42 ounce magnet this was handcrafted in the usa back when soundstream was in folsom california that's right johnny cash thing about them back in the day although these do have a stamp steel basket it appears they have been stored properly over the years because the spiders are not sagging. Looks pretty good in here. And yeah, impressive for it to be a 30-year-old speaker. And uh, anyway, we're going to get it hooked up here in a minute. But we do want to tell you, Chuck didn't only send one of these. Yeah, boy, he sent two. That's right. We have two SPL-10 subwoofers from 1995 here to show you guys. So what are we going to do next? We're going to get one of these wired up using these funky terminals here using the old spade connectors and we're going to wire them in parallel that's going to give us two ohms per driver for now we're just going to hook up one in a sealed enclosure we got these a while back from best buy when they were on sale for like 15 dollars. so i'm going to show you that here in a minute i'm just showing you the dual voice calls here on the subwoofer and the additional tabs there so you can actually hook up your speaker wire but yeah here it is this sealed enclosure which is a little bit under one cubic foot, so it should be pretty good, pretty decent for this particular subwoofer. So let's get it mounted, get it wired up, and then we're going to find out how it bumps. Now for temporarily mounting subwoofers like this, I only use four of the eight screws. So I'm not showing this on camera here, but I did get it screwed down so it's nice and tight in the box. If I was going to have this mounted permanently, I would obviously use all eight screws. The box is pretty, you know, generic. It does have push terminals on the side, but it will work. And today we're going to pull out this Soundstream Reference 405. I haven't shown this one before. I got it a while back. It is in nearly mint condition. It came out about the same time as the SPL subwoofers did. It's a five channel amplifier, but on the sub channel side, it's 100 watts. It says 100 watts. I think it does much more than that. We'll find out in the future. But the thing I really like about these particular amps is the connections and i'm going to show that in a minute these are something i just wish amplifier companies would use today it's so slick but if you flip the amplifier over there's these little caps that cover up some of the different switches and settings like you, you can set the sub channel for high power or high current you set it to high current if you're going to do loads below one ohm we're going to leave it in high power for this case because we're doing two ohms but there's also switches here for your channels three and four one and two whether you want to use the crossover or bypass it, where you want to bridge it or not. A whole lot of different switches going on here. These switches usually go bad too. So if you have one of these amps, a lot of cases, these switches need to be replaced. Sometimes they can just be uh, shot with a little contact cleaner, but in a lot, most cases they do need to be replaced. This amplifier accepts four gauge inputs for power and ground and accepts up to eight gauge for all the speaker terminals. I'm using 16 gauge here 
for the left and right, and then for the subwoofer, I'm using 12 gauge. Notice Soundstream, even back in the day, had two different connections for the subwoofer, so you could add two easily to the amp. Now, the way I have it set up now, it just needs one set of RCA inputs to power all the different channels. Again, these <laughs> terminals are so slick, they don't allow it to short out. They are very, very nice connections. I love these Wish amplifiers would still use connections like this. Let's get the amp powered up. When you turn it on, it lets you know whether it's in high power or high current mode. And let's get the Elax hooked up as well for the mids and highs. And let's try out some bass songs and watch the subwoofer flex. This is the big whizzy bass of Halloween song that Bassatronics made for me a few years ago when I did the Tomb of Boom. Let's move on to the Space Age Hustle. Now I know in a video, all you can really do is see the subwoofer flex. You can't really feel the bass output unless you have a real nice system. But I can tell you this single 10 inch sub impressed me. The fact that it's 30 years old and was still bumping the way that it was, it was crazy. Now if you'd like to see me hook up two of these in the future and also test that Soundstream Reference 405, let me know in the comments below. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. So I haven't shown you guys this before, but it was donated right before Christmas 2023. High package value, $1,000. What in the world could be in here? Well, it's related to this video. It is Soundstream. Let's take a look. Check this out. Do you know what this amp is? Yeah, it is a beast. It is from the mid 90s. And I can't wait to show you this guys again in the near future. So let me know what you think below. Big D, till next time, I'm out.